So, you know, the high level truth, I think, that we agree on is when you look at risk factors like LDL and ApoB, even if you consider them a risk factor, it's very context dependent. And to have a myopic focus on that is problematic. Well, yeah, that's true. I agree. And I think the other thing to add in, which is another layer to, to trying to really question whether or not LDL is an independent risk factor of heart disease, and then the degree of which it is. So, you know, is it a major risk factor? Is it a minor risk factor? And myself, and um, in 2021, I always get the year wrong, 2021 in BMJ Evidence-Based Medicine, myself, Robert Dubroff, and Michelle Delorge, I was second author, we did a systematic review, which has now been corrected to a review for some reason because it was a bit of backlash. But we really looked at all the randomized controlled trials looking at statins, the PCKS9 inhibitor drugs, which are very potent lowers of LDL cholesterol, and azetamibe. And it was about 35 randomized controlled trials. To answer this question, is there a consistent relationship between the reduction in LDL cholesterol, Nick, and reduction in cardiovascular events? Because you've got to look at the other side, right? Because one is, okay, you've got a biomarker that's got some association with disease. Again, context dependent. Mm-hmm. The next question is, does lowering it make any difference? And we found there was no consistent relationship, even from industry-sponsored trials where the data is usually not independently verified. So the, when you, and then your paper now is so is so good, so strong, so helpful that it really reinforces this message. And of course, one of the things I want to ask you, which was interesting, mm. of course, one of the limitations is this one year. Okay. Yes. But my understanding reading the paper is that the people enrolled had had their LDL levels quite high, at least over 200, right? Um, for a period of several years. Is that correct? Yeah. So the precursor paper to this um, was a yeah. baseline study where we had a matched population, the Miami Heart. And what we did is we compared plaque levels in those two populations. Now, at baseline, the average age of the participants was about 55 in the keto group, and they had been keto for 4.7 years on average. Right. At the end of this study, it's 5.7 on average. This, we were looking at a one year, you know, Ah. study, but we still did look at about, you know, five years after they started keto and their LDL jumped. How did they compare to a matched population who is generally healthy? And what we actually found was, there was no increase in plaque in the keto group versus the people with LDLs that were, I think the average levels at the baseline were 277 for the keto group and 123 for Miami Heart. Right. And that works out to about 700 milligram per deciliter year exposure. Actually, the lean mass hyperresponders were trending to have less plaque. It was a non-significant difference, but there was a trend towards less plaque in the lean mass hyperresponders. So by the end of the study, 5.7 years on average, everyone at least two years keto. Yeah, that's fascinating. I mean, that adds, I think, another layer that, that it's a reasonably medium term, you know, that you haven't seen any significant increase in LDL. Yeah. And sorry, in, say, sorry, sorry, like, yeah. The, we, with the, the high resolution CT and geography we have now, one year is pretty standard. I mean, our PI Matthew Budoff is a um, an expert in cardiac imaging. And like he said, this is an appropriate time frame based on what other people do based on the modern technology. The fact of the matter is, of course, we want to follow them for two years, five years. But like, we don't have a time machine, so check back with me in 2030, and we'll have more data. These are where the data stand right now, and I think, yes, they're preliminary, but they're pretty reassuring. You're a cardiologist, so you're obviously uh, no many cardiologists. How would they, most cardiologists, react to the idea, now the evidence-based idea, that lean, metabolically healthy, insulin-sensitive people on a ketogenic diet with LDLs of 200, 300, 400, 500, uh, or more might not actually be a high risk group for cardiovascular disease. How would they react? I can tell you that they probably, first of all, just as part of human nature, their initial reaction would be one of skepticism. They won't want to believe it. You know, these things take time. I've even seen that. I, I thought there's been great progress in the shifting of the paradigm of heart disease away from focusing on LDL cholesterol, in part because of some of the work I've been doing and getting a lot of publicity on over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, but recently what I found, Nick, and, and this is really important for the context of what we are up against in terms of the narrative. That's why your paper is important. It's why it's so important that we get some coverage on this. I'm sure it's going to do very well. It's going to get a lot of certainly alt media and hopefully some mainstream media will react to it and, and, and you know, give you some, uh, amplify the message. But what's happened in the last couple of years is I've noticed there's been almost a reemergence of an obsession and an, an extra fear around cholesterol. And I suspect that's also because of the non-statin new cholesterol-lowering drugs they're getting pushed because they're, they're very lucrative. Drug industry spend a lot of money on them. 
So what I've been finding, and this is and the reason I find this is actually for my interaction with patients who come to me from second for a second opinion, or even reading letters from other reputed cardiologists in America. I have a lot of patients in the US and in the UK where there is almost a, a reinforcement of this cholesterol hypothesis, like as in, you know, um, unless you get your cholesterol down, you're going to have a heart attack soon, you're going to die. There's a lot of misinformation, unfortunately, Nick, within the minds of cardiologists. And this is still based upon, uh, to a large degree as well, the, the focus on the management saying if you get your LDL as low as possible, you are massively reducing the risk of a cardiovascular event. 